Hey guys, Will Terry here, and in this video I want to talk about why so many art teachers suck. And um, so you might be asking, well, why did you even make this video? Why are you making this? Um, first, a little bit about me. I've taught at two different university illustration art programs, um, and I co-own svslearn.com, where we teach um, all the fundamentals of becoming a professional freelance illustrator, um, and, and we focus on children's book illustration. But I am tired of hearing constantly from our students that they learned more in one of our classes at svslearn.com than they did in four years of their college education program. That is ridiculous. That's a travesty. That is unbelievable. And so I want to make this video to talk about why so many art teachers suck. But I also want to highlight how many art teachers are amazing at college art programs, at university art programs, at art school programs. And I want to shout out to my um, the teachers that I've worked with, some of the teachers that I've worked with at uh, UVU in, uh, in Orem, Utah. And that is uh, Perry, Adam, Chris, and Howard, and you know who you are. And those guys are amazing teachers, and I'm, I'm leaving out some as well. Um, but I am not talking about the dedicated art teachers that spend tons of time working with students, helping them, um, you know, giving of their time when they don't have to, um, who make classes and make curriculum and give lessons in their classes. I'm not talking about those guys, the, the ones that are competent and, and that bleed for their students and really enjoy teaching. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the ones that have no business um, teaching and I also want to give you guys, uh, if, if any of you are listening, um, that are about to enter into going into a high school art program or a, um, a college, more, more a college art program, um, and how to avoid those bad teachers and stuff. And so let's get into it. So I've got five, five things down here, and I would love to hear your comments. If you think I've missed any, I would love to know, put it in the comments there. And um, so anyway, we'll get started. So number one, uh, they're good artists. They can, they can make great artwork, but they don't care about teaching or even worse, they are fearful of training their competition. So they basically sandbag and they don't give you everything that they know because they're afraid of the competition. I know of two university art teachers who have vocalized this to me personally. Um, and who have said, you know, we're, we're, I'm really worried that we're training our competition and at least on, well, on one of them specifically, they, th this, this, this guy purposely just let his students just kind of go feral in his class. Just do what you want. And didn't teach him all the stuff that he knew because he was running scared. He, he didn't have the abundance mentality. He didn't, doesn't understand that he is not going to be his own demise in training art students and giving them what they need and what, what they could benefit from. Um, that is a, such a backwards way of thinking, um, and, uh, and counterproductive. And, you know, here he is drawing a salary, drawing a paycheck from the student's tuition and then deciding not to give back to them. So I think that's probably, the, the smallest category of, of artists, but the fact that I know two people like that, uh, I put it on the list. Um, number two, and this is a big one, they have the degree, but they aren't good at art. So the, the system is, the, is a big problem. Our, our system of higher education, um, even in starting in high school, is uh, does not account for and accommodate for the fact that art is a very different subject than English, um, English math and science. And, um, and so the problem is, uh, the, those institutions value the degree over the portfolio. I mean, what could be more ridiculous than that is, is, uh, is that if you have the degree, you're qualified, you can get hired. It doesn't matter if you can make good art. And if you can't make good art, you can't teach. This is plain and simple. Um, I have never met a bad artist or someone who can't draw, can't paint, you know, can't design, who could teach all of those things to other people. Never. It's not never going to happen. 
Um, so um, what you have is, you know, people that qualify in, you know, they got the right, the, the good grades, maybe they went to the right institution. Maybe there's, you know, gender and race that's brought into that. So they're, you know, they're hiring for those, those reasons as well. But that's not good for the art artist because uh, that's basically saying every artist is the same as long as they have a degree. They're, they just fill a, a slot. And that's simply not true. That just doesn't work. So you, you can't just plug any person in and get the same output from them. They have to have a good portfolio. And our institutions just hire people based on whether they have a degree or not. And they overlook the best artists. A lot of times the best artists don't have a degree because they've been making art. Weird, right? So, um, so that's number two. Number three is uh, no or you know zero or low accountability from the college or high school. Um, art is a subjective subject, uh, and you know the administrators that uh, run the college, uh, they they don't know most of the time they don't know anything about art. Um, in English, math, and science, you can test. There are metrics. There are there, are, you know, you have to pass tests, right? Um, and you either pass them or you don't. And if you don't, you don't get a good grade and you don't, you don't um, end up working in that field. In, in, in college art programs and, in, you know, and in the, in the, the people that, uh, that hire um, high school art teachers, they don't know whether the teacher, you know, the, the administrators don't know whether the teacher is actually good or bad most of the time they just they, like again they hired them because they had a degree so the teachers allowed to just basically do what they want in their class in fact when you know when I was hired I was on my own and that's that's the way largely teaching is they they hire the teacher and the teacher kind of just does what they want especially in art um, there is almost never a curriculum um, if there is it's only lip service you know they write the class but no one ever checks up like, did you meet this metric? Did you teach this? Did you teach? There's no, um, there's no textbook usually. Um, a, a teacher can come in and go, okay, everybody, this is what we're going to do. Just, uh, you know, draw and paint today. We're going to draw from the model or we're going to draw, um, you know, I'm going to give you an assignment and, you know, just, just do your best and, and try to illustrate this, this, uh, word prompt or something like that. And, um, and so they, the, the students are just kind of on their own to try to figure out what it, what it would be to make a good illustration without any lesson, without any, you know, step by step, like here's how I do it. Um, and so a lot of te a lot of these bad teachers just let their students just kind of roam feral and turn in what they do. And then they, then in the critique, it's like, you know, you put your artwork up and they're like, Oh, I, I like the way this one's going. You know, it's all very vague stuff. I, I don't like this one, you know, and for the for this reason or that reason. But there's no real teaching, or a teacher will sometimes um, just kind of draw over your your drawing, but not explain what's going on in their head. So they can make your art better, but you don't know what they did to make it better, and that's really frustrating for a student is is to see their mistakes being fixed, but not understand how to fix them themselves because that actually takes breaking down uh, curriculum into individual small bite-sized lessons on what exactly you're doing to get those results. And uh, there's no incentive. Um, that's actually number four. Let me move to number four right now. There's actually no incentive for teachers to create their own curriculum or to create their own lessons. Um, the The incentive really is, a, and I would say especially with the... the um, um, the salary teachers adjuncts often, you know what they're hoping to do with adjuncts. And for those of you who don't know what adjunct is, it's basically part-time. It's just a fancy word for part-time teacher who is not salaried and who doesn't have a full-time position is hired on a contract for per semester basis usually. And, um, adjuncts are paid so horribly, <laughs> so poorly, um, that, it's actually in some ways good because it's it's so little that you have to want to do it um, to to fit it into your day. And often there are adjuncts that are well off and they do it basically to give back. And that's kind of the way the program was designed for adjuncts. Unfortunately, most adjuncts 
are needed by the university. And so they end up hiring people who actually are desperate to get the money, albeit so much less than a full-time teacher makes per, per hour, you know. Um, it's ridiculously low in some cases. And sometimes you have people that have no business there, but they couldn't find anybody else, so they plug them in. That's another way you get bad teachers. But there's no incentive. Like, you don't make more money if your students do well. You don't make more money if you create classes, or, or I'm sorry, create lessons. Um, if you show up and babysit and, you know, you give your kids an assignment and they're in there working, well, if an administrator walks in and your your kids are working, they're working. So you don't get in trouble. There's there's no there's no real accountability um, for that teacher to feel the ne the need. Now I'll be honest with you. When I was teaching uh, at the university um, in illustration, I did the same thing sometimes because there was no accountability. So I would go in there sometimes and go, "Hey guys, today." you know, we're just going to work on your assignment and I'd be busy doing something that I needed to get done and then checking on their work a little bit here and there. And, you know, I fell into that trap as well, but where I didn't create later on, uh, you know, I taught adjunct for like nine years uh, at UVU and a couple of years at uh, BYU. But I, um, in the, in like the, the later years of my teaching, I realized like I really need to create lessons because it's going to make my job easier to get results out of these students. And it's also more fun. And I love teaching. And I was frustrated when I went to school. And, um, you know, the teacher would make my art better, but I had no idea why or what they did or how they did it. And I knew that I couldn't reproduce it. Um, and so, you know, I felt a, a responsibility to my students. And a lot of really good teachers do. Um, the, the really, really good ones, they do care. And they really want their students to learn. And they are in teaching for the right reasons, not just to draw a paycheck. They actually love teaching. Um, and, and so there are those teachers out there and I want to make sure that I emphasize that. Um, but there's, there's really no financial incentive to work harder and create lessons. Um, and so that's a real problem. Um, and so the, the, a lot of teachers suck because they don't give lessons. They just turn their students loose. Um, and then number five is, um, they don't work professionally, so they don't know anything about the art or illustration markets. They can't pass on any of that business um, mindset. Um, the, 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 what you do after you get your degree, after you finish here, how are you going to use that art degree, that illustration degree to get real work? Because the, um, the, you know, a lot of, a lot of kids, when they go into school, they think that they're, you know, they're, they're working on their grades and stuff. And they think that they're going to, um, you know, get out and, and, and use their degree to get a job. But it doesn't work that way. There, there aren't art jobs that require a degree. There are very few. The teachers do. And so it's, it's ironic that sometimes you'll have students in class that work really hard on getting a decent grade in illustration. Their work sucks, but they, they work hard at getting the assignments done and fighting for every point they can so they can pass their classes because a lot of those guys go into teaching, you know, and they know that they're not going to be able to, to um, go out and compete in the, in the art markets, in illustration markets. So they're planning to become a teacher right away. When I was going to school as a student, I remember one of the worst gals in our uh, class, when she was getting bad grades one time, she was like, well, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to be a teacher anyway. She actually said that. She's like, I'm going into teaching, so it doesn't. I don't really care if I get a bad grade on. Um, so she's ruining someone else's life right now, or other lives, um, with the fact that she can't make good art, and so she can't teach good art. Um, and so that's a, that's a huge problem with the system. They don't work professionally. Um, if you don't work professionally, then you can't give real world assignments, right? You can't give your students the kinds of assignments that they can then get out of school and get work with. In fact, it, you know, we, we also do the three point perspective podcast and we have, um, people send in their portfolios that we often look at and critique on the podcast and we'll talk about it. And you, you can tell when someone has come from a good illustration school or a bad one where they've been given, um, assignments that they're, they're so vague. They're, they're more like, uh, 
they're they're in an illustration program, but they're getting like um, the kinds of assignments you would get if you were in a, a fine art program, you know, where you just kind of paint your feelings and and you just we look at the stuff and we're like this no one can use this in the real world and you know in a in a in the book market or editorial markets or advertising markets or any of that it's it's not really usable art and so they're wasting their time doing these assignments that aren't really helping them learn the fundamentals of illustration um now i do know uh that that these uh teachers are supposed to have professional hours and you know as they they're they're teaching one of the things that they're supposed to do is they're supposed to um they're supposed to you know have a professional career outside of um the the university and stuff that's a joke there's not time for teachers to be full-time teachers to go to all the meetings that they have to go to that the university requires them to go to all the committees that they have to serve on and have a professional career you cannot do both okay but they pay lip service to it. So they have to like fake like they're having an art show here or there or pretend that they're working on this or put something in a faculty show and, and you know, to help get their professional hours and stuff. It's not professional work. And that that's not a, um, that's actually a critique on the system. That's not a critique on the teachers. If I were a teacher full time in an illustration uh, program, I wouldn't have a professional career. You can't. So, um, uh, that's that's part of the problem. Okay, so what can you do if you're a student that's getting ready to go into a college program, an art school, or something like that? Uh, well, one, you really need to find out what the students are saying about their art program. And you need to not look for reviews that are published online, but you need to talk to the individual students. You need to try to find them. And don't talk to the students that the university sends you to they're going to send you to the ones that did really well. Um, there are some art programs out there, and for fear of being sued, I can't. I don't want to name them. You know, we live in a litigious society right now. But there's a chain of um, art schools that they do not teach uh, anything. They take the students' money. They, they, um, they, they. There's more than one actually, but uh, one that I'm thinking of in, in particular, where there's so many students that come out of there. Um, broken and feeling like they wasted their money and they weren't taught anything. And uh, if teachers stick in, in these institutions, if the in, in this uh, one chain of schools, if the, if the, they have good teachers who say, "Hey, we're not, we need to revamp and 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 really um, hire better teachers, and we need to to work on our curriculum because the students aren't aren't learning," they get fired. If they stick their head out of the, you know, up, they get fired. So. So that's one thing you have to do is you have to find students that can that you can talk to, um, that you can find out what they thought about their program. If you do, also ask them which teachers in that program to avoid if you end up, you know, going to that school. Um, you know, you've you've got to find out how to not take classes from the worst teachers. Sometimes it's unavoidable. Uh, but sometimes there's multiple sections of the same class and there's obviously teachers that are better at it. So you need to be really strategic in planning on getting into those better teachers classes. It will mean all the difference in your um, art career down the road. Having the best teachers uh, that are offered is night and day. And having the worst ones um, is just a waste of your time and you're not learning anything. And so you've got to find those better teachers. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about why SVS, what we do at svslearn.com is a little bit different. Of course, this is self-serving to me, but I, it, it is apples and oranges in some ways. We are not really in direct competition with art schools and with university art programs because the experience you get there is completely different. But I will say that because uh, our costs are so low at $250 a year, you nobody you can't get a loan you don't, you can't get a student loan we're not accredited so that's how we stay really streamlined you know a, a state art school might be um you know a uni state university might be 5 to 7 8000 dollars a semester or a year something like that whereas a, a an art school is like you know 20 to 40000 50000 dollars a year um ours is 250 dollars a year and, um, but for that, you know, you don't get a degree, but what that does for us, because people can't get loans, 
that's actually real money they have to come up with out of their pocket. And it's interesting because because uh, students will take out a loan sometimes for you know twenty or thirty thousand dollars for a year, but because they're not writing that check, and because they're postponing when they have to pay that those those payments, or maybe mom and dad is paying for it, um, or helping out or something like that. It's easier to spend that kind of money um, than often it is for someone to spend two hundred fifty dollars a year. Um, but one of the things that we absolutely have to do if because uh, students aren't getting a loan, we have to um, bring really good curriculum to, to, to the marketplace. We have to bring the best curriculum we can possibly bring with the best teachers. Um, and you know the, we all work. This is SVS Learn is a project that we did, uh, you know, Jake Parker, Lee White, and myself. Um, we put together and we hire other teachers sometimes, but it's primarily us. And we do this because we love teaching. Um, we love the, the side hustle, which is what this is. We have a staff of people that, that run this for us so we can spend our time doing the projects that we want, the freelance work, the personal projects, um, and publishing our own, uh, our own products. We, we care because one, we have to, or we would not exist. If word got around that our classes were mediocre or that, you know, if someone said the same thing, like, man, I didn't learn anything from, from svslearn.com, we wouldn't be in business right now. So we have to work really hard to bring really good curriculum uh, to the marketplace. And, you know, the, the system was set up for university art programs and, and, and you know, the four-year college program many, many, many decades ago. And I think that that system is actually, um, it was so successful in the beginning that it's kind of still successful, despite the fact that there are many broken people that come out of there that feel like they didn't get a career. You know, they're, they went into an art degree and they're not working as artists at all. Uh, they're not, they're not any closer to working in freelance illustration markets or working on their own projects than they were pretty much when they went in. So you have a lot of people that were like, Oh, I went, I went through illustration. Uh, what did you do with it? You know, well, I, I don't know. I didn't ever really try. I didn't know what to do. How can you go through a four year illustration program and not know what to do when you're done? That's the fault of, of that, that program. Um, they they often do not teach the practical application of the, 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 the degree of, of what was learned of the, the information that was, was given out. Um, and so that's, that's my, uh, that's, that's my video on why many art teachers suck. It's unfortunate, but hopefully this video will help some of you avoid those guys. Um, and lastly, do not subscribe to my channel unless you want to see more content like this. And with that, I am out.